Hello everyone. So in today's video, we are going to be talking about mechanism of action of beta lactam antibiotics. And first of all, we need to understand why these antibiotics are being called as beta lactam. So these are being called as beta lactam antibiotics because they have beta lactam ring in them. And this ring is actually having four atoms in it. Out of which three atoms are of carbon and one atom is of nitrogen and one carbon atom is attached with oxygen through double bond. These antibiotics include penicillins and its derivatives for example carbapenem or cephalosporin or monobactam antibiotics. All of these are actually beta lactam antibiotics. So let's talk about their mechanism of action. So in gram-negative bacterium, there is presence of porins which allow the uh, penetration or passage of different molecules and this is actually embedded in lipid bilayer of the outer membrane. So this outer membrane is only present in gram-negative bacterium but it is absent in gram-positive bacterium. And after that, there is presence of peptidoglycans and peptidoglycans are attached with each other through cross linkages and these peptidoglycans are responsible for uh, morphological structure of the bacterium cell. So it is very important for the structural integrity and rigidity of this cell. So after that, there is presence of cell membrane, which again have lipid bilayer and these also have some proteins which are being embedded in these lipid bilayer structure. So these proteins are called as penicillin binding proteins or PBP, which are major site for the binding of these antibiotics. These proteins play their important role in transpeptidation of the peptidoglycan chains like they are responsible in cross linkages between uh, different chains of peptidoglycans which is very important for the structural integrity and rigidity of the cell wall. It is just like various people standing together and holding their hands so that they could fight for a certain cause. So it's just like that various chains are holding each other to uh, make cell more strong and more rigid towards the damage. Outside cell membrane there is presence of periplasmic space which has these proteins. This space is not present in gram positive bacteria. Over there there is only periplasm. So cell wall actually consists of outer membrane along with peptoglycan chains. So both of these together form cell membrane and these uh, structures which are present in outer membrane are called as porin which are responsible for the penetration of the beta lactam antibiotics. So in gram positive bacteria there is absence of outer membrane therefore cell wall consists of only peptidoglycan in them. Peptidoglycan are also called as murin or mucopeptide and it consists of polysaccharides and polypeptides. So these are actually polymers having cross linkages between polysaccharides and polypeptides. Polysaccharides present in these peptidoglycans consist of two amino sugars which are present alternatively and these are NAG and NAM, that is N-acetyl glucosamine and N-acetyl muramic acid. NAM is further attached with a peptide chain that is consisting of five amino acids. So this peptide actually terminates at D-alanyl, D-alanine. So penicillin binding protein actually removes the terminal alanine in the process of forming cross chains between different peptides chain. So different peptide chains are uh, cross-linked together by the removal of terminal alanine of one chain 
and in this way there will be formation of cross link between two peptide chains and this process is called as transpeptidation so to look deep into this process now we are drawing alternating polysaccharides and to which peptide chains are being attached so nag and nam are alternatively present and nam is actually attached with peptide chains consisting of five different amino acids so next to it there is another chain which is having polysaccharides consisting of two sugars nag and nam and with nam there is presence of a peptide consisting of five amino acids again so what actually happened that penicillin binding protein will attach to both of these and cause the removal of d alanine and in this way there will be process called as transpeptidation and both of these uh, chains will bind together so now this is the normal process of formation of peptidoglycan in the cell but what actually happen when you are having uh, beta lactam antibiotics in the periplasmic space they will attach covalently to these proteins as we know these proteins are binding site for a uh, terminal peptide that is d alanyl d alanyl and now these proteins are being attached to these uh, antibiotics so what will happen there will be no transpeptidation process and when there is no transpeptidation process what will happen there will be no formation of cross linkages and ultimately the rigidity or structure of the cell wall will not be that much strong and it will be susceptible to high osmotic pressure and other damages and in this way cell death will occur so cell death can be due to high osmotic pressure or due to auto license now auto license are actually enzyme which are normally present for the degradation of cell wall in the bacterium so what they do is actually they are for remodeling of the cell wall so when there is remodeling of the cell wall it means that uh, old cell wall is being replaced by the new cell wall but when uh, these autolysin actually destroy the previously formed cell wall and there is no further formation of the cell wall because of inhibition of transpeptidation and ultimately there will be presence of no cell wall in the bacterium so these are actually bacterial cidal inaction and these are only effective against rapidly growing organisms that synthesize a peptidoglycan cell wall so therefore it will not be effective in those organisms which do not have cell wall at all like mycobacterium viruses fungi and protozoa so all of these organisms do not have cell wall at all and therefore these antibiotics will not be effective in those organisms resistance against these antibiotics can be developed through different mechanisms like in certain cases there is development or formation of uh, beta lactamase which is actually enzyme responsible for destruction of beta lactam rings of these antibiotics and ultimately there will be uselessness of these antibiotics and second mechanism of resistance can be alteration in penicillin binding proteins which is the binding site for these antibiotics when there is alteration there will be no binding of antibiotics to these proteins and this will cause no inhibition of transpeptidation process so the process will go on and there will be no use of these antibiotics this kind of resistance mechanism is present in MRSA penicillin binding proteins are called so because they have the ability to bind penicillins and they are also called as transpeptidases because they are actually enzymes responsible for transpeptidation 
So this was all about beta lactam antibiotics. If you have any question, let me know in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching my videos.